Welcome back, everybody, to your three-man booth. We are heading into NFL Week 15. I'm Dan Salem with Phil and Bud. It's a pseudo-holiday edition for us here at the three-man booth. I botched our picks last week. 0-2, guys, you saved me. You just got to win. We're kind of meandering along here around 500. We need to, like, boost our numbers. We got to boost them up. We were, at least I was, <laughs> we had a good first half of the season. Um, I, I think... I think we'll start right there with some really good picks. Phil, would you lead us off for week 15? So my first one's a boring one. I'm just going to take Green Bay over the Panthers for no other reason than no one can stop Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams. I mean, just let's let's call it like it is. And it sounds like McCaffrey's not playing this weekend. So I don't know. Just give me the Packers. Because right now the Packers have the number one seed. And it's not a lock. So they, they just need to keep winning. Yeah, and the Panthers stink. So that's that's... Yeah, I mean, it's, you might as well just peck it. Now, my second pick is 100% spiteful because I will never, ever pick a Pittsburgh running back in fantasy ever again. And I'm talking about you, James Conner. Unbelievable. I know it's not your fault. This line sucks. Yeah. Steelers are playing the Bengals. They're laying 11 and a half. Give me the Bengals. Oh, you can get 11. You can get as many as plus 13. I'm going to give you the 13. Give me the 13 then. They're going to cover that game. All right, because you might need them. <laughs> I pro- I, listen, did you see any of that game? That The Pittsburgh, they can't move the ball. The ball is out of Ben's hands in like less than two seconds, and his receivers can't even catch the ball. Well, let's talk about them in a bit because he's an oh. old man for football terms, and it's late yeah. and it's cold. I mean, so. I just saw this coming, but wow. All right, those are my two. Well, we'll get right. back into that. But who you got for week 15 of this weird I am going – I'm going to uh, take Miami over New England. Uh, I, Miami's defense is uh, is good. Yeah, uh, they picked Mahomes off what three times this week, and if they weren't playing anybody but Patrick Mahomes, uh, they probably win that game. Um, even with Devontae Parker being completely absent and two and not playing super great, but nevertheless, uh, I'll lay the two points and uh, and take that. New England's not very good. And I will take anybody at this point who plays against the Jets. It could be the London Silly Nannies. Um, the Jets are a uh, embarrassment to professional sports. Uh, what's the spread? Seventeen and a half. It's it's seventeen. So you gotta lay seven. Okay. They the, the Rams could literally. This is no joke. The Rams could lay thirty points, and I would still take the Rams to cover. Uh, I'm taking the Rams. Yeah, I, I'm with you. <laughs> I don't want to pick against our team because I feel like they screw us, but I'm with you. They suck hard. I'm going to start with another winning team for my picks. I'm going to back the Chiefs. They're laying just like a couple points against New Orleans, three and a half. And I'm sorry, but anybody who loses to the Eagles is in a bad place. Now, I don't know the status of Breeze's health entirely, but I do know that the Chiefs are looking for playoffs. They want to secure that number one seed. Three and a half. I mean, I guess they got to win by a touchdown, basically, in general football terms. But I like this. I don't like the Saints right now, especially since they burned me last week. Uh, so I'm, I'm going Kansas City. And I'm going to take another team who's better than their record. I know the 49ers are falling apart. I know they lost another player. I know Garoppolo's back out. But I just – I don't, I don't like Dallas. Like I'm going to give two and a half. Don't be Cowboys. fooled. Like, don't be fooled. They played Cincinnati. Don't be right. fooled. And then the Cowboys you just pick Cincinnati to win. I know that, but that was a spiteful pick. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so the Cowboys are in the cover. The Cowboys are home and they're getting three, which means that San Francisco is really or favored by six, but I'm only late two and a half. Dallas sucks. The San Francisco 49ers could potentially play themselves into a playoff spot if they can win out. I don't think it's going to happen, but they're a better team. I'm going to take San Francisco. Those are our week 15 NFL picks. Now let's head straight for the playoffs and try not to focus on our losing football teams. Now the Giants are still in the race, so we got to talk about them. But I want to go back to the, San, the Pittsburgh Steelers first because they were the last undefeated team. And – I don't know what to think about them right now. This is what I think. Go ahead, Phil. What, what do you I, think? I don't know because 
man, what we saw the last two weeks, I mean, they played a Ravens team two weeks ago where half the team was on the COVID list and they barely won that game. Then they played the game this weekend against, I don't even remember who it was now to be quite honest with you because it was a terrible, it was a terrible, oh, it was Sunday Night Football. Oh, the Bills. They played Buffalo. Oh, that's right. Good. I mean, yeah. I mean right. they're lucky they scored 15 points. Well, Buffalo's going to be one of their main competition. Yeah. Every single snap, the ball is out in two seconds. They don't run the ball either because they can't or they don't want to. I mean, Connor gets the ball or, or McFarlane or Benny Snell gets the ball. And, I mean, they're, it's like when, when Barkley got tackled uh, the first game against Pittsburgh, <laughs> you know, in yeah. week one. There's just – there's no run game. Well, so this is my thought, right? Because the, the adage in football is when the weather gets cold, you've got to play great defense and run the football. Now, the Chiefs are an obvious exception because they're outstanding, prolific passing team, and they can continue to do so. But it would seem as though Pittsburgh was able to pass when the weather was warm, and now that it's cold, they are not playing so well. I mean, there's, 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 nothing, yeah. there's, there's nothing about this team right now, how they're currently developed and set up, that leads me to believe that they are nothing more than a one and done football team in the playoffs. I mean, they're, they were 11 and zero. their last two games. They've looked lower than mediocre. Um, they, to Phil's point, they have no running game. Their defense is only going to hold them into games for so long. Um, their wide receiver play has become suspect at best. And Ben is throwing the ball way too much. Too and fast. His, cool. Right. And he's, and he's getting – his arm strength is not there. To your to your point, Dan, beginning of the year, he was able to throw the ball downfield. Weather's gotten colder. He, he, he doesn't seem like he has that zip like he did at the beginning of the year. Well, I wonder because I, they've been expecting him to retire every offseason for a couple seasons. And it's him, Drew Brees, and Brady and Phillip Rivers that are just hanging around. And it's easy for these older players to play well when it's sunny and nice. And it's harder after four months of football and it's cold to continue to play at that high level when you are probably, I guess they're not much older than us, but they're old for football. and It's hard. And I'm not surprised that I guess. But ironically, all four of them are in the playoff chase right now. Well, they are. And it's, well, it's not surprising because they are very good, right? They're not playing bad. But they can't carry their team. And Buffalo's obviously better. Like, that team really came together, um, obviously. But Buffalo, like, and I might be going out on the limb here, and you guys may or may not agree with me. We can have a certainly debate. The only team that's going to be able to beat Kansas City is Buffalo. I, I, I kind of agree with you right now. that There's nobody else playing as well. Unless Their defense is starting to come together. I mean, yeah. when Buffalo traded for Stefan Diggs at the beginning of the year, people thought to themselves, how is that going to work? They did. And I think yeah. everybody is realizing just what they have up there. I mean, even Cole Beasley. I mean, Cole Beasley is making a huge impact in, for them offensively. Yeah. They're not great in the running game, but Josh Allen can throw the ball all over the place. He's a big body. He reminds a lot of people, including myself, of a young Ben Roethlisberger. Remember when Ben came in and nobody could tackle him and he was a big dude? They're, they're 10 and three. Yeah. Their, their last remaining games are very, very winnable. They're probably going to go 13 and three. Uh, so, so there's only, only one team's going to get a bye. And it, I'm thinking it's Kansas City, but that's going to be a highly contested bye. They're going to want it bad. Mm hmm. Uh, I they're going to want that because they're going to want to play all the games in Kansas City. But for a team like Buffalo, who's used to playing in the cold, that's not going to matter. And, and there's not a lot of fans in Arrowhead, so that the noise is not going to be there. It's going to come down to, you know, yeah. Patrick yeah. Mahomes. I, I don't think this is the case, but we could see it. But the only thing that would really take Buffalo down is they don't have a lot of playoff experience. Obviously, Kansas City does. Pittsburgh does. You saw it with the Ravens last year where they didn't have the, the experience and it felt like this, the stage was too big for them. Um, I don't see that with Josh Allen for some reason. I just don't see it. He carries himself differently, but we're going to find out. Um, do you guys believe in Tennessee at all? I'm trying to think of any other teams. I don't believe in the Colts. 
I just I believe in Tennessee. I mean, I think Tennessee's defense needs to get buttoned up a little bit. But as long as Tannehill's playing the way that he's playing and Derrick Henry is is running the ball like he is, they're gonna be they're gonna be a force. I mean, look at what they did last year in the playoffs. I mean, they controlled the clock, they ma- they managed the game, their yeah. defense played well enough. And uh, you know, Mike Vrabel is gonna figure out how to how to get this team ready to go for defensive football. I, I just I yeah, That's no, what I, I think. I mean, like that. Derrick Henry is a beast, and is again, he's hard to tackle. He runs for, I feel like he runs for two hundred yards a game. Yeah, well, I guess the the they're likely to make waves in the playoffs. There's a couple of teams that'll squeak in. I mean, Miami's in now, and they got a really good defense. I just don't see them pushing anybody. And obviously, the Ravens are on the cusp. The Browns are in. But their so defense is like the easiest remaining schedule. It's incredible. Who? Oh. The Ravens. Yeah. So they, they could steal that final spot. I'm just trying to could, think. Could the Browns could the Browns win the AFC North? I mean the Browns the Browns lost last night, but I, that was that was an unbelievable uh, football game. I don't think so. I think they're, they're they're two games behind Pittsburgh still. Yeah, they got a lot of they gotta win out. Yeah, but you just said Pittsburgh's not playing that well. And they got to play Pittsburgh in Week 17. Yeah, so I mean, it could, it can come down to Week 17 for the AFC North. It could. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh's going to beat Cincinnati. They just, I hope they don't cover. That's my pick. But they're going to beat Cincinnati. Come they got to lose. They got to lose one of their next two games, basically. Pittsburgh. Right. So, so Baltimore plays the Giants, the Jaguars, and the Bengals. Oh, so they're three and zero. That's so. That's what I'm saying. They have probably the easiest remaining schedule. Unless we get the Giants that played Seattle, not the Giants that yeah. looked like a – That's – that's, well, because, uh, I don't know, these running quarterback – these – there was a time during that game where there was one pass completion from a Lamar Jackson, one. And it was, like, deep in the second quarter. They, I put, they, they put some graphic up there, and I forget what the hell it said. Maybe it was more interception. I forget what it was. But anyway, he had one at, at some point during the middle of the second quarter, he had one completion. Well, and you can't you can't win like that. And right. of those but teams, they were up 21-14. So he's like, what do we got to throw the ball for? No, right. But there was 45-42 or something silly. Like that's no there's no defense there. That's not playoff football either without defense. So someone that like was they shut it down. I mean, that was that probably should have been everyone's expecting that to be a low scoring run the ball kind of game and it turned into a shootout. Yeah, it just doesn't bode well for their playoff chances. I mean, I I think Cleveland's in. I don't know if Baltimore will squeak in or not. We'll see. Um, Can I ask a question real quick? Of course. Do you think that if Colt McCoy played on Sunday? the Giants would have fared better. Now, this is not a reflection on whether or not Daniel Jones is the better quarterback. This is a question on whether or not the Giants made the wrong call in playing Daniel Jones versus Colt McCoy. Daniel Jones doesn't play defense, and the 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 Cardinals did whatever the hell they wanted. I think they had, what, one se- – I'd have to look it up, but it felt like they had maybe one second Kyler Murray all game. There was no pressure at all. Yeah, on- that, that's true, but – I had the same thought as you, bud, even while watching, because the Giants' offense looked so out of sync. And out of not 100. percent There's no no chance, and he's probably still not 100 percent if he plays this week. Well, and maybe it's just the fact that it was a bad matchup because Arizona blitzed them like no other, and I gotta believe Colt McCoy would have been on his back too, because he's not a scrambler. But they just got they couldn't run the ball like they did against Seattle. They couldn't do anything. Yeah, it was but, just. It, Felt like the it felt like the Giants of the first five weeks, not the Giants of the last five weeks. But we talked about this last week in the podcast, Phil. That if you were the Giants, you need to make whatever the decision is going to be long term in order to make the playoffs. Right? Like rushing him back was was not the way to go. In my, in, like you could have very easily lost with Colt McCoy, and you could have looked somewhat more competitive offensively. Possibly. Daniel Jones was completely one dimensional. He couldn't, he couldn't leave the pocket. He obviously couldn't scramble. He couldn't do anything. So take all of that aside, at least Colt McCoy would have been able to give you an opportunity to move the pocket yeah. a little bit, right? He may not, he's not the better quarterback. I'm not saying that he's the better quarterback. What I'm saying is that considering Daniel Jones's injury, 
why would you put him in there knowing that he's not 100% when you have another quarterback that just beat Seattle? Well, so this is what I'm guessing happened. Daniel Jones was well enough to practice, right? And he rallies the entire team behind him as their starter, their leader. And the whole team wants him to start because he's their guy, right? That, that probably swayed the tide. He was well but, enough to play, but not 100%, you know, because you're right. I, he, there was a couple of plays that I'm watching. I can't, like, he, he would have scrambled. He, he would have gotten the – no, he, he wasn't but, leaving the pocket. But, but instead of giving him the extra week to heal and come back at 100%, they just killed all their momentum and good mojo because now they feel like they're a bad football team all over again, having lost to a, another playoff team potential. And Meanwhile, the other three teams in your division won this weekend. So now it becomes even more – it's like the, the whole division sucks. But everybody is right there now. And everybody's got to play each other the last two weeks. I mean, it's going to come down to week 17 who's going to win this division. Somebody's going to win this division at 7-9, and 6-10. and 10. Well, who's Washington got left? Because they're not losing. That's and, what I'm looking for. I mean – I don't think the Eagles and Cowboys can pull anything off, but they're if, not. if Alex Smith doesn't play, Washington will not win. Dwayne Hassens came into right. that game and he looked awful. The only reason Washington won that game is because they scored two defensive touchdowns. That's, uh, That's and I, I'm not even being a homer on this. That's the reason they won that game for two. I mean, you can take away the one defensive touchdown and they could have lost that game from Chase Young that he scooped up and ran back. What, what uh, Chase Young is a beast. Yes, agreed. What happened to Alex Smith? It wasn't his. It wasn't the same injury, right? No, it was, it no, was it's, it's a calf. Yeah. So, all right. So they got Seattle, Panthers, and then the Eagles. So they should lose to the Seahawks, but we don't know. I hope. Yeah. Now, that, now, see, the thing is, the Giants have the tiebreaker. So if the Giants win this week against the Browns, which is right now looks like a long shot from what we saw last night, then the Giants are back in first place because they have the tiebreaker. So There's no way Seattle loses. Did you see what they did to the Jets? <laughs> No, I agree, but and I'm not, but I'm not convinced the Giants can beat the Browns right now the way they were playing. I'm so, saying, looking at what we saw last night, that looks like a a real tough matchup does, now. Does this come down to the Eagles having to beat the Reds, the, the former Redskins, Washington, so that the Giants can get in by beating the Cowboys? It might. That's it. That's what I'm saying. It's going to come down to Week 17, and the, the Giants Eagles, will own the tiebreakers. But if the Giants and, lose the next two weeks, can the Eagles clinch by beating Washington? Yes, yes, because they have the tie. Yeah. Well, can, let's the see Cowboys, the can the Cowboys clinch by beating the Giants? No. That's, no, they're not winning shit. No, they're two games out. There's three if the, if the If the Giants lose to the Cowboys and the Cowboys can win another game, the Cowboys would overtake the Giants. The Cowboys have San Francisco at home this week, and the 49ers are a shell of themselves. The Cowboys, the Cowboys have to play the Eagles. I'm sorry. The, wait. Uh, I'm, I'm in Philly right now. Philly's going to play the Cardinals – then Dallas, then Washington. <laughs> okay, well, so Dallas plays the 49ers, then the Eagles, then the Giants. Right. Washington. So we, all, all these teams are probably going to lose this week, but the Cowboys could win, which makes it even more of a mess. The Cowboys have to play the Niners? That's, is, that, is that what happens? Yeah. Now they're home. And I'll tell you what, though. The Eagles are a different team with Jalen Hurst as quarterback. I think they just see. There's two things with the with the New Orleans game. One, I think they weren't still. They they have no tape on Jalen Hurts, right? They didn't know how to play him. Two, I think the Taysom Hill experiment has run its course. Phil, yeah. last week last week you said they were going to Jalen Hurts so he could be the sacrificial lamb. Well, we and he put that. and he put up he put up 300 something yards of total offense uh, against a New Orleans team that is number one in the league. Do we really think that? Because he's a rookie, right? I mean, they're trying their rookie out. Did we really? Did we really? I don't think anyone expected what happened to that game. Happen. Well, but, <laughs> so, so what? What happened to Drew Brees? Is he? Is he just an old man now, or is he actually coming back? He's got eleven broken ribs. I don't think he's coming back. <laughs> he's not an old man. I mean, <laughs> I, I thought he was supposed to come back for the the Eagles game. I must have misread that. Um, so Are we going to go through all this and not talk about the Jets? I gotta talk about the Jets for a minute. Okay, all right, all right. new kicker out of it. Go I'm ahead. chopping at the bit. We only got like five minutes left. I gotta get. I gotta get something off my chest. Okay, get it off your chest because they sucked again. I mean, well, not only did they suck again, how, how could a team look this <laughs> uncompetitive? 
they they weren't even prepared to play. I, I, I watch these games. I don't even get mad anymore. I don't yell at the TV. I don't drink heavily anymore. Nothing. I don't nothing. You're nothing. a better person because they're so bad. I, I don't even care anymore. I just don't want them to win. And well, then they're doing you a favor. Well, I don't think. And they here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. Let me throw this question out at you too, because we talk about this a lot in the podcast. We talk about this, the three of us privately. They're going to move on from Sam Darnold, right? Yeah. They're going to have to. If they have the number one pick, they're going to, they're going to get Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence is not going to make an impact. You want to know why? Because the defense still sucks. The offensive line is still suspect. They have no wide receivers. They have no no reality of what a tight end is. Look, so wh- what is – he's not going to be the savior. This is what they need to happen, and I'll tell you right now. And it's just a lot of things. But it, but every year we see a team shoot up the ranks. And I'm not saying it's going to be the Jets next season. But this is what they need to happen, right? So C.J. Mosley will finally play, and we need him to actually be the, the player he was before. If they don't get rid of him because of his cap hit. Well, they shouldn't because he was a great player and he's their best player if he's on the field. So I agree. They need that. They've got like three number one picks, three first round picks, and like 10 draft picks, right? They need to draft five starters and they need their draft picks from this past season who are playing decent but didn't really see the field much to actually be starters. So, like, they need Mims to be a starter. They need. Uh, I think Mims has looked really good when he's played and he's been healthy. Right. So they need they need both of Douglas's draft classes to be good enough to start in addition to the veteran leadership, which they have won. So maybe they add a second one in the offseason. Mm-hmm. That could put them competitive. That's how they'd be competitive in my mind with Lawrence. Now, But, my, but Miami is fine. Buffalo is better. And you know New, New yeah. England is going to. They'll well, figure well, this shit out next year. I, I don't I don't I know try not to think about the competition because we never know. Someone's gonna fall from first to worst. It wasn't Buffalo this year, it was the Patriots or worst. But um someone's gonna fall down the ranks, right? So I'm only looking at how our team can get better. The other thing that we, we have to consider is that if Lawrence is really this good, Burrow now they didn't win a lot of games, but Burrow was outstanding for Cincinnati before he got hurt. Yeah, Cincinnati so, has more weapons, arguably, though. Do they, or did he just make them better because he's a great player? Oh, you still have Tyler Boyd and A.J. Green and Mixon when he's not hurt, and, you know, you still have some pieces in Cincinnati. Tyler Boyd was, was, was awesome until uh, Burrow got hurt. All I'm saying is if Sam Darnold was on a different team, we might be saying that he was awesome. Because That's true. It's, it's situational, and if you got a shitty coach – and you combine that with crappy players and a quarterback who can't grasp the system because it's not right for him, it, it's disaster. So how would we need those things to go together well? Uh, it's never happened for the Jets in our lifetime more than once. How would five years five, maybe five. five years from now, what is what is the story of Sam Darnold? I, I think he's starting for another football team. I'm not sure which team, but I think he's starting for totally agree. If I was him, I'd go to Jacksonville. I, Listen, oh. I would go anywhere where Adam Gase isn't. This guy is is an awful football coach. He's a quarterback killer, killer. Yeah. Well, I didn't hate I didn't hate Darnold's rookie season, but he didn't have continuity to year two, and it killed him. So he also had Gase going, and then Gase, yeah. Gase. The same thing happened with with, with Mark Sanchez. I, I keep saying it. You took away all of his weapons, and he was garbage. This kid has no weapons. He's they're going to move on from him, and they should. If they can get Trevor Lawrence, but he's going to go to some place like San Francisco, and you know San Francisco's move, moving on from Jimmy G. Yeah, right. Speaking he's going to go somewhere. He's got a good offensive line, good defense when healthy, tight end, running back, and wide receiver help, and he's going to go ten and six, eleven and five. Is Garoppolo going to that? Is Garoppolo going to go back and lead the Patriots? Because he's still a good player, too. I would do that. If I was New England, I would get Jimmy Garoppolo in a second. He loves Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick loves him. Because I actually think that the Patriots make the playoffs if they have a different quarterback than Cam Newton. Like, Newton's okay, but, like, if they actually had a decent – He's not okay. He's throwing 10 times a game, and and he's completing 50% of his passes. Yeah, so why didn't they go after a player better when they could have – 
the because, they cost, because it only cost them a million dollars. <throat> right. That's why. And as Bill Belichick said, we spent all of the money to win Super Bowls with Tom Brady. So they what won a douche that year. I mean, uh, do we, well, let's talk about Tom Brady for a second. Wait, 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 wait. Because oh. this popped into my head, and I, I didn't see a lot of the Jets game because I don't get it, but I did hear it on, on Red Zone that, speaking of old Jets quarterbacks, there was a Geno Smith sighting this weekend. Fuck you, Phil. Excuse my language. This is how bad the, this is how bad the Jets were. The Jets were so bad that Geno Smith came in in the third quarter, in the middle of the third quarter, and he was the quarterback for Seattle. I mean, if that's not a kick in the balls, I can't even tell you. I mean, awful. Wait, awful. Geno Smith played for the Seahawks? Yes. You didn't even know that. That's the point. He's so bad. Oh, man. No, I didn't. I mean, I was – Sort of watching. They took others. they took all of their starters out in the middle of the third quarter. Thank God my fantasy team didn't rely on this week. They took everybody out. Carson was out. Matt Calf was out. Russell Wilson was out. Tyler Lockett was out. The whole offensive line was out in the middle of the third quarter, and they still won by 37 points. My so, God, they're terrible. So, I'm, so happy. I'm so happy I didn't forget that. It popped in my head as we were talking about Jets quarterbacks. Like, wait a second. Was- <laughs> former, former Jets quarterbacks make great backups. They're, they're, they're well worth it at, at adversity. Especially when you come from West Virginia. Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. Um, oh, wait. Tom, I, w- I wanted to talk about Tom Brady for a second because they're kind of trying to buy their time, but they don't have the defense we thought they did. Are, who is who is the team to beat in the NFC right now? Is it it's it the Seattle, Los Angeles, Arizona combination? Because I don't like the other teams all that much. Rams are good, man. Yeah, Rams can put up some points, and if they can play defense, it's, they're it's, really really good. Jared Goff is back in the next couple of weeks because he'll be there for the playoffs. I, I don't think we expect Taysom Hill to be starting the playoffs. I, I think the Taysom Hill experiment is done. It's it, it served its purpose for three weeks. However, it's been the teams are teams are figuring out how to defend this now, and it's not. It's I don't think it's very hard for them. For did them, Drew, did, nah, but. did Drew Brees break his ribs or not? <laughs> fractured. fractured, fractured. So he's going to be back. But he's been it's funny. Five, three or four, four or five weeks already. It's maybe it's been four. You know, it's funny. We all we all threw out teams, but none of us said the Packers. Oh yeah. Aaron Rodgers is, I mean, he's playing like an MVP. He, every, every game, at least for fantasy, he puts up 40 plus points in fantasy. He looks, he, he's a stud. No, he's, their offense is very good. I just don't know if they have enough defense. Right. That's, that's their Achilles heel. But if you can outscore everybody, what's the difference? It matters if you play a good defensive team, I think. I think it's all if the Packers get the number one seed and everyone has to go to Lambo, that's going to be huge. Fans or not, it doesn't matter. Yeah, because they, they're not. Are they talking about bubbles? Because they they kind of dropped no, that. I, I saw something before we before we came on that that there's there will be no bubbles. Okay, so everyone's going to be at home stadiums and then the Super Bowls wherever it is, Tampa or something. Right. Yeah, I, I, is it in Tampa? I don't know. It might be in Tampa. No, actually, Super Bowl Super Bowl is in Tampa. Right. Um, listen, I'm really listen. praying that Tom Brady doesn't lead the Buccaneers to a home Super Bowl because that like never happens. And- listen, the way you beat Tampa Bay is by throwing. And look at the teams. Green, you just said Green Bay throws the ball a ton. The the uh, the Saints when Drew Brees throws the ball a ton. Seattle throws the ball a ton. That's how. You, the, yeah, Tampa Bay is not gonna be the. They're not gonna buck the trend this year. Poor Tom Brady. Yeah, poor. So so we all picked um the Chiefs preseason, like we didn't want, I, I, we tried not to pick chalk, but well, you picked the Colts for fun. But. I'm still alive. You, Listen, the Colts, all, all of a sudden the Colts are playing really, really good football. I know. I'm just, I'm not a Philip. I just, player. I can't. But, Phillip no, I can't. Pick is still alive. I didn't take the chalk and my pick is still alive. This is, there was a T.Y. Hilton uh, sighting this weekend too. I mean, finally. And Jonathan Taylor's running for 150 yards a game now all of a sudden. It's like it's weird. All these rookie running backs. I mean, look at Cam Akers last week. Got 175 yards uh, on Thursday night. I mean, all these rookie running backs are starting to break out all at the same time. They got fresh legs and something to prove. You're right, and they're all on pretty good teams too, which you know doesn't hurt. 
Yeah. Does that mean Marlon Mack's not coming back next season if you guys were replaced? No. I, I, I mean, they picked – Jonathan Taylor was supposedly the best running back prospect in this entire draft. Now, he hasn't been playing like it the first seven weeks, but he has the last three. Okay. Listen, if you want to get rid of Marlon Mack, I'll take him as a Jets fan. Right, Dan? Yeah. Uh, absolutely. He's, he was a good player. Very good player. Yeah. I mean, he's only he's only played in the league two years. I mean, you see, he's still got a lot of uh, tread on the tires. Yeah. He might come cheap, too, since he's coming off that serious injury. Mm-hmm. Darnold for Mack trade. Yeah, but, I mean, do you think Philip Rivers is going to play one more year, or do you think he's done after this? Maybe you'll get Philip Rivers in the package yeah. to teach Trevor Lawrence. He, he, do they want him another season, though? Yeah. <laughs> Well, what's their 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 alternatives right now is Jacoby Brissett. So they're an eight and four football team. I mean, guys, I mean, we're selling. I, I don't think we're giving enough credit to Philip Rivers. I mean, he's he hasn't played great, but I mean, they're an eight and four football team. They're my Super Bowl pick. So yeah, I guess you're right. He's leading them to wins, whether he's starring or not. It's better than. We'll and he hasn't good. turned the ball over as much as he has in years past. I mean, he's turned the ball over. I mean, he always does, but I mean, he's not throwing what you know, interceptions after interceptions. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Uh, he's got to win in the playoffs for me to, to believe in him. He, I watched him lose too often with the former San Diego Chargers in the playoffs. <laughs> well, I think, Phil, that Bud and I should pray for the Giants so that we have a New York team to root for in the playoffs. But I'm not well, super confident after last week. So well, let, let, That was a one-game anomaly. We'll see what happens next week. I hope you're right. Uh, we're about to get hit with a blizzard, so we're going to try to bundle up here. Have a good. <laughs> You're not used to it, Dan. I, I hope you brought your mittens and your winter hat. <laughs>